In this training video, you will learn about the processing improvements in shop floor tracking at the employee level. These improvements include data collection activities performed by employees, such as clocking in and clocking out, entering actual and indirect labor, and as well as breaks and stop times. The ability to view outstanding activities, easier data entry because of navigation improvements concerned with functions now supported. Some of the activities available in data collection include clock in and clock out, which is an optional feature allowing employees to start and end their shift activity. Actual labor is designed for employees to easily start, set up, and run activities. Indirect allows employees to track labor time not associated with a work order. The break option allows employees to easily record breaks. The stop option is used to stop open items such as set up, run, and break in indirect activities. Elapsed labor allows employees to easily record in areas where starting and stopping activities are not feasible. Defaults allow you to assign or modify the default work center group or work center. The clear option allows employees to quickly clear any items or remove unsaved edits. Lastly, let's talk about work order logic that is used in shop floor tracking. Work order selection lists have logic applied to observe core manufacturing rules for labor tracking. The rules are, it must belong to the selected production site, the operation status must not be closed, excluded, or ordered, it uses firm work orders only. Work orders cannot be suspended. Fully allocated based on the MKT ALL MGT parameter. Work order documents must have been printed of the DOS FAB set to mandatory. No subcontracted operations and orders must meet criteria if the parameter is set to blocking. Now let's take a look at how to perform processing tasks at the employee level in shop floor tracking. Let's go ahead and take a look at the shop floor portal in action. Shop floor tracking is available either from the workshop manager business process under track work orders or under Manufacturing, Production Tracking, and Shop Floor Tracking. Once I'm in the Shop Floor Tracking portal, I can enter my employee ID, my site, and click on Clock In. Once I'm clocked in, you'll see all actions on the side become available. I have Actual Labor, Break, Indirect, Elapsed Labor, Defaults, and Clear. Stop is disabled at this time because I don't have anything in progress. I'm going to go ahead and start some work orders, so I'll go ahead and click on Actual Labor. So we talked about the Actual Labor screen being designed for the employee to easily start, set up, and run activities. So once the function is entered, you'll see that we are immediately presented with open operations depending on our selection criteria. Automatically, the Start Date field will populate with today's system date, and then you'll see all the open operations for today's date and prior. I also have the capability to filter by work order, operation, work center group, and work center. Now if we had these default values enabled in our employee ID, they would automatically be pulled into the screen. We're not, we don't have those values set at this time and we'll demonstrate that a little bit later. So if I only want to see items for perhaps the work center MAC 036, I can go ahead and enter that information tab out of the field, and you'll see the grid is automatically refreshed. There's no clicking select or search in order to see that information. 
Now if I want to start maybe my setup activities for these two items, work order 210174 and 77, I'm able to select more than one item at a time and then I can click set up start. Once I do that, I'm automatically taken back to the shop floor tracking portal and you'll see my two setup tasks are now in progress. Now once these tasks are in progress, I can either close out of the screen or if I need to go to actual labor to start some other tasks, I can do so. So I'm going to go ahead and click on actual labor again. You'll see those items are still listed here. I'm going to enter my work center to filter my information. Then I have my two tasks that are already started and this time I'm going to click run start. When I do so, the system checks and says, sees that I already have an active setup and gives me the prompt if I want to stop that activity and start the run activity. I'm going to go ahead and click on yes and I'm returned again to the shop floor tracking portal and you see my setup activities have been stopped and now I just have my run activities. Now it's time to take my afternoon break. So I'm going to go ahead and click on break and I'm presented with any break code that is set up just as a break type. So I'm going to go ahead and select my PM break and click OK. As I do so, my run activities are automatically suspended and now just my break is in progress. Once my break is completed, I can go ahead and select it and click stop. My run activities have auto automatically been started again and you'll see that the start time is now at the end of my break. Now let's look at indirect time. Say I've been called into administration to fill out some paperwork. I'm going to go ahead and select admin and hit OK. Now because the indirect code that I selected is not an exclusive task, it just runs at the same time as my others do. However, maybe I'm now called into a safety meeting. So I'm going to go ahead and click indirect again, select meeting, which is an exclusive task, and hit OK. Once I do so, those other activities have been suspended and will remain so until the meeting is completed. I'll go ahead and select my indirect time and hit stop. And all those activities that were previously in progress are now started again. Now we've already used the stop action a few times in this demonstration, but let's talk a little bit more about it. It's used to stop the open activities, including the setup, run, break, and indirect. As you saw, it does restart any suspended transactions that are linked to the stopped activities. It also has the capability for run activities to record the completed, rejected quantities, reject codes, and also close the operation if needed. So if I want to close work order 174, I can go ahead and make that selection. I can type in the quantity that I've completed, type in the rejected quantity, if there were any, select my reject code, and then also close the order. Then click stop. You'll see that item has been closed and now I just have my indirect as well as my run. I'm going to go ahead and stop my indirect time as well because I've completed that paperwork. Now let's move on to elapsed labor. Elapsed labor allows the employee to easily record time in areas where maybe starting and stopping was not feasible or you forgot to clock in, forgot to start a task, things like that. The availability here is based on the employee setup. If the employee does not have the elapsed labor checkbox selected in their ID, they will not be able to get to this screen. In fact, the action will be disabled. The grid works the same as it does in the actual labor in that it's loaded automatically with any open operations from today's date and prior. I can filter by work order, operation, work center group, and work center. I'm going to go ahead and filter by work center again, but this time I'll use machine 37. As I do so, the, d the grid is dynamically refreshed again, and I can take work order 77 
and enter my duration for setup, run, in the time unit of minutes. In this particular case, let's say I worked 60 minutes during run. My remaining quantity is 3,000 and I completed 3,500. So the system actually knows that the actual quantity is larger than the estimated quantity and it's a non-blocking warning but it does prompt the employee to double check the, their information. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Say my rejected quantity is 500. So I did actually complete what I should have due to breakage. And because the amount of completed quantity matches or is greater than remaining quantity, my close flag is already selected. Then I'm going to go ahead and hit save and then I'm returned to the portal. That particular line item is not listed in the shop floor tracking portal because it's just a start and a stop. It's not an actual open activity. You're basically opening it and closing it at the same time. Now let's talk about defaults. Defaults allows the employee to quickly assign or modify their default site, work center group, and then use those values for automatic filtering of the data in the grid. You've seen throughout this presentation I don't have a default work center group or a work center. I'm going to go ahead and enter my default site along with a work center group and then a work center. Now once I go into actual labor you'll see my grid is automatically uh, loaded with those particular filters. Now for some reason I need to change what's displayed, I can delete those fields at any time and tab out and the grid will be reloaded. The same thing applies for lapse labor. The criteria automatically brings in those default values and if need be I can delete them and tab out and refresh the data. One item we didn't cover earlier was the link to the work order status inquiry. So what we can do is from any line item that has a document number, or has a work order number, we can click on the action and select work order status. And it will display the work order status window that you can see the general information for that work order, such as the products on it, the components, and the status of your operations. Now you have learned about the improvements in performing processing at the employee level in shop floor tracking, including improvements with data collection activities and easier data entry, ability to view activities 